Hi guys, it's Rachel here. So in the previous video, I showed you how I carved my little stamps. And I actually haven't tested this one to see if it's okay. I probably should do that. Um, we'll test it on a piece of paper. So I'm thinking, I've got these two pieces of fabric. This is a linen, it's not ironed, but I think it won't be a problem. Um, and then I've got this hemp here. They're both antique. And I thought I'd stamp those and make little two little pouches. Just very simple, like the pouch I did in the 100 day project. I can give you a measurement if you like. Let me see here on my board. I hope you're all well. Um, okay, so that's 14 inches by nine inches. They're, and they're both pretty much the same and I'm just gonna fold them in three like that okay so let's mix let's mix color now on this one what I was thinking I'd like blue but I don't know because I've got the red stripe I wonder what color went the wrong way this way I may trim off that little um hemming bit there and of course I need to cut this a bit straighter and it needs an iron but I'll line it when I've painted it um, mm -hmm. I think I might do this one with a more white sort of color and I was thinking this rabbi about there or do I want that one no this one oh, we can have two no, two would be funny. Okay, so we'll do we'll do um, just one rabbit. And I've got my Arteza fabric paints and as usual the um, I'll just get a bit of water on my sponge to and I've got some paper towel here. Um, the links will be in the description box. So we're gonna put our paint on here. Oh we need a bit more. Look, and I'm using the Arteza. Um, what are they called? Waxed um, palette papers. Okay, so let me get this and go about here. Oh, it's very pale. Okay, well, it needs to be thicker then. This could also um, be a good idea to get your shape, and then you could embroider it too. That's an idea, but we need to put more. Maybe I'll put it on here and paint it on there directly. How about that? That might work better. A bit more paint on there. It was too light before. Okay, let's try. And I can kind of line it up. The other one was so pale it didn't really matter. That's better. Still very pale. Well, then, you know what I can do? I can get my brush do I have a big brush here bigish brush and I will paint some of it put some more paint on there that's how you do it and I probably should have a piece of paper under there because it does um, it can soak through So when um, it's not flowing, just get a bit of water and, and put that on there. And this will have to dry, I might do a big tail, um, for six hours and then I have to iron it before I can do anything else. It's 
so much fun doing these different things. So the only difference really with the paper is that um, you know, when you paint on paper it flows better. But when it's on fabric, the fabric absorbs the paint and so you need to sort of do a few coats. I am still here, I'm just concentrating. Okay. Right, we'll let that dry. See, it does soak through. Maybe I'll try and get a bit more on those pinky bits. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then see what to do with it. Wait, that's that one, so we'll put that aside. Okay, now where's my blue one here? So first of all, I want to do it with a navy blue. So I've got my phthalo blue. You can see I have my go-to colors. What's this color? Egyptian blue. Oh, could have done bright pink. That would be cool. I have to do some more experimenting with these um, paints. I'm looking for my black. Silver. Where's black? Espresso brown. Oh, espresso brown will do. Have I opened that one? Yes. a lot of paint. Let's just give it a mix. Yep. Now I'm going to use this, even though it's got white on it. Try to brush the white off. I just want to um, put some of this on here and see how this one stamps.
Oops, I moved it. It's pretty cute. Okay, I think that's going to be good. Okay, so we'll grab another piece of paper. Just take the whole thing. I'm going to put some... I'm not going to put any water with it. I think it stamps better without water. Put that on there. Stamp it right here. It's probably not straight. Oh well. Ho hum. Good. Oh, isn't that cute? I like that. Add a little bit more. Sometimes I just add a little bit of water just to make it flow better. I'm not going to do perfect coverage. Okay. So I just wanted to show you before I end off this segment what I did with some of the things. I think I showed these in my first video because I videoed it a while ago so I've forgotten now. But I did these um, squiggles on the fabric and I think they make really cool made them into ruffles so how cool does that look so these are going to be fun to play with that one I did this as a narrow one really cool um, that one I'm not quite sure what I do with that yet and then I've got this one here and then oh another one so really really fun things to do and then I haven't done anything with those I might ruffle them or I might um, do something with them I'm not quite sure yet so that was just experimenting which I highly recommend doing when I first received the paints so there you go so I've got to let those dry and then we will proceed with my project okay so thank you for watching bye okay so I'm back and I've stitched across there and that's my inside now all I'm going to do for this bit here is I'm just going to um, for this bit here is I'm just going to overcast stitch um, really easy and I'm just deciding whether I want to do it with um, floss so with this sort of thread or do I want to do it just with regular thread and the other side let's just put a pin in here as well so it stays flat now the other side I'm going to do like this so we need to have a piece of this gorgeous fabric. I can't tell you how frail it is. Okay, and probably don't want quite that much. That one, and so I'm just gonna fold it over again, about halfway, pin it. Put 
a bit too much more too much on that side so just jiggle about make sure you're more or less even it's a very more or less business put that there I've got this now I've got to decide with this piece do I want to put it there but I won't be able to see it or do I want to put it there because I'm going to finish that no I don't think I like it there I think I'm going to put it here and that's going to fold over the back like so and you'll see that I'm being careful here although I don't think it matters but I've, I haven't oh no maybe maybe I should I'm going to overlap it I can overlap it there it doesn't matter because that that's going to be stitched down it's not going to be like this one that opens right to the edge If you do it on the sewing machine, they would both open exactly the same because you've stitched it on the sewing machine, so it would be the same. But I'm not stitching it on the sewing machine. I want to do it by hand. Okay, so that's going to go there, and then it's going to fold over like that. And I need to put something else. So I could have this little piece that's nice and soft, put that there. Actually, I've changed my mind again. I don't think I am going to overlap it. Sorry, guys. Because I'm going to actually just trim that bit off there, the white bit. Because I don't, um, it will make my fold bulky, and I don't want to make my fold bulky. There we go. There is rhyme to my reason, or method to my reason, I should say. Method to my reason. Reason to my method? I don't know. Don't worry. We'll move on. Move on. So this will go here. So in which case, this is the back. So I'm going to flip it over. There's going to be a little gap. Just a little gap there. Now, somewhere, somewhere I had, so you won't see the gap really. I did have some lace somewhere, didn't I? What did I do with the lace that Lulu rejected? What about if I, if I decided to put my a bit of lace there? I'm just going to cut some. What if I were to put lace there and fold that over? I think the lace is too busy. I think the lace is too, too busy. So then I, oh, I know, I need some of this fabric. I'm going to have some olives, okay? You're going to have olives? Yes. How's your headache? It's a bit better. A bit better. And I'll put that one there and that's perfect. Okay, good. So that one will fold over there. Like that. But if we get this like this. Also something that would make your life easy too is if you were to iron it. Iron these half closed and then they would stay where you put them. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down. Now what I'm going to do just so you know is so that is going to be my so this is I'm going to do this bit first and then I'll do that bit because this is inside this is the front that's the back so I don't I want my knot on that side not on the front a little bit confusing isn't it and prob oh, I'll be able to get one one row probably out of this one so what I'll do, or I could probably even put my knot in there, but then I won't be stitched there, will I? So I'll keep my knot on the outside. doesn't matter. It's hand-stitched. So I'll just show you this bit first, and then I'll pause the video again. Hopefully I'll be able to join them all over to, all together, because if, if I get too much in my memory, it tells me it can't export the video. So we're just doing the same as we did across the top just make just sort of go by feel and make just adjust to make sure it's okay a bit much on the back I can I can trim that down before I do I'll just get this one row done and then I can trim down a little bit at the back if I've got too much better to have too much than too little 
and you want to make sure it's sort of flush. And I might only do, I might trim them down at, no I won't only do, I have to do three because otherwise I might trim them down a little bit. Because that way I don't, I'm losing all of that space there if I stitch it all down. Three, yes. No, I don't have very much here to knot off. Got it. That's lucky. Just cut your tails off. Okay, so I can take that out, even though I haven't stitched that little teeny tiny last bit done, down. Oh my goodness, I wish things would behave. Now before I go on, I'm just going to, now why is that one uneven? I cut them together, oh well, I'll just do that knot. Actually that's a chunky knot, I don't want a chunky knot. I'll do the quilter's knot, it's not so chunky. Okay. I'm just going to put my one stitch in there that I needed to do. I'll trim that tail off. We don't need that big tail. Now, if you wanted to be sneaky, I want to trim that off. That's not being sneaky. That's... I'm going to trim that off too much. That's better. If you want to be sneaky here, you can... Just slide under there like that so you can't see where you came across and then go through. And I'm, wanna, I'm gonna make these a little bit closer, these rows, than I did there, because it didn't matter. So I really don't wanna lose more than a centimeter And I may, after this row, I said after the first row, but after this row, I may trim off a little bit at the front. It's a bit thicker here, so I'll just do up and down. So I don't know if you can see, but my my rows of stitches are a bit closer. I want to come back with a third one, but I'm, I am going to trim off just a little bit there. So it's not quite as long. course if you wanted to do it with your sewing machine you'd already be done by now it'd all be finished it'd be a super fast gift to make for someone but cute but I do like the hand stitching um, as a lot of people with 
the virus have a lot of time on a lot more time now because we're at home well we're not at home we're allowed to go out but um, goodness knows why because the numbers have increased um, but we we do now have to wear a mask obligatory anywhere outside your home after six o'clock okay so I'm, I'm gonna just trim off a tiny bit here so that way I don't feel like I have to go too far from my previous row there we go so it's a bit narrower and I'll probably trim down the flap as well the same amount yep okay so I'll pause the video and finish it off and then show you hi guys it's Rachel here so we're back with part two um, you will have seen if you're watching this hopefully um, part one um, I'll link it down below um, where I carve the stamps then you will have seen part two where I painted on here and then this is the next part I can't remember if I'm going to attach this to the last video or it's going to be a separate video where they've dried I've ironed them and we are now going to proceed with what to do now this one is great I had less paint on this one this one is a little bit um, plasticky but anyway we'll just make do so next time um, it's just a lesson next time I will learn um, not to put so much paint on maybe do a different color so why don't we work on this one we might not get both done um, and what I would like to do is first of all choose a color here okay and I'm going to choose um, not that color this color yep and I am going to first of all outline my bunny if you wanted to you could embroider on the bunny and do some shading but I'm just gonna go around the bunny and that's the first thing I'm going to do and I'll probably use three strands I like to use three strands and I would definitely be playing around more with the fabric paints because I also fancy um, Oh, I've got no needles in there. That's helpful. I've only got pins. So we will grab this. Um, this is the one I made from my needlebook course. So um, I do fancy doing also um, painting on fabric out, but doing um, it with, can't get my words out, with... Um, stencils oh mm, my wordy lordy can't be I need to just um, I've got some fluffy bits there it's not allowing me to thread my needle okay so let's see We'll just do probably one pouch and I'll do the other one and I'll put make might share a, a photograph on Instagram. We'll just do one pouch um, so that way I can show you how I'm going to make it up. Although I don't have a clear idea yet, but it'll evolve as I'm stitching along. So I'm just going to do a little running stitch just off the edge of the bunny. anyway if things don't work out 100% as long as you had fun doing it and I've had some fun doing this so we'll just go around the bunny hope everybody is well um, now I've got a lot of videos going on with the Arteza products so I'm hoping I don't get too confused as to where I'm at because I've recorded some I've got to record finishing off bits and pieces for them and that sort of thing because maybe they're incomplete so it's all a bit um, confusing it's 
So this is a, a very easy, um, this is going to be a very easy um, kind of in inverted commas non-stitcher pouch as well because it's so easy. I'm not going to be lining it. It's just going to be one. I mean, I've got quite a nice um, medium, maybe slightly, not heavy, heavy because it's very easy to sew, but a very strong antique hemp here. Um, so this is going to be fine as one layer. I'm going to make it, I think, I'm thinking fairly similar to, I did one um, for a journal in my 100 day project. It's going to be fairly similar to that. Okay, nearly there. See, it's very fast. That just adds a little detail there. And then I'm going to see if they have any fabrics I'd like to put on here, but I'm thinking I might like a lace. I don't know. We'll have a look. Okay. Okay. So that's that. I might snip that a little bit shorter because that will, you'll be able to see all of that. So it needs to be a little bit neat. Just a little bit, not too neat. Okay, now I think that's cute just with the little detail stitching around the edge. Let's just put the thread back. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Put that over here. Now, I've got a little basket of... I um, don't know if I might like something, a little piece of that there. Maybe, maybe here. It's very fragile. I'm going to carefully tear it because it could crumble in my hands. I think I might put that there. Maybe that will just go over there. Put that there. And let me see my laces. more I tend to shy away from the really white laces but I kind of I'm thinking I would like a oh that could be quite cute on the flap stitch that across the flap or sometimes I, oh, I think I like it more there layer it there that's it my other option if I didn't want to do that was I have these that I painted and I really like these as well. Put that down there, not that one. What else do I have here? I did really like these as well. You see, that's nice. Um, I thought I had more. something like that down there to balance it could do that or do I prefer something like that there with a bit of lace but then you wouldn't see the bottom of the lace I quite like that too you see too many options it's good when you have options it's confusing but it's good when you have options I don't think I'll wrap that around I'll just take that off so that will stitch there, that will go there, and that 
may or may not go down there. Okay, so what do I need here? I need to get some thread. I'm going to grab this one. Yeah. Put a pin in there. I'm um, actually because that's the selvage of the um the hemp there. I'm actually going to keep that wonky edge. I'm not going to cover that up, but the rest of it will. That won't because that seam has a seam. But I'm going to put something maybe down the side there. We'll see. And and with the the red one, it'll be a similar sort of process. I might have to paint some more fabric or something. Some just to go with it or if I want to put a ruffle on or something like that I don't know I'll see okay so what I'll do here is I'll just go around the edge oh I need to have a pin in there why did I take the pin out I'm going to go around the edge. I might come back later and um, do some running stitch in it, but I'm just going to go around the edge the fastest way possible for you guys. It's not too thick, so it's fairly easy to stitch. Just make sure it's not bunching up. Okay. I'm going to have to go up and down here because this is thick. Oh dear me. Two more stitches and I had to do that, didn't I? Just make it I think it doesn't it's not the end of the world because I'm going to have my lace overlap over hang you know overlapping that's it okay so now see it's just a trifold and it's only been hand cut. I haven't even, actually we could straighten that up now. Where are my, oh my goodness, the scissors are all the way over there. So I'm just gonna straighten that up. 
and I just eyeball it. Okay, and let's see, it's that way. Oh gosh, it looks the same. Okay, I'll put it that way. I think I like that best. Or do I like a ruffle? I'll put that down there. Lulu, yeah. can I ask your opinion, please? What do you like best? So you can have the lace up there. Mm -hmm. And I could put a ruffle down there. Mm -hmm. Or a bit of this ruffle. Yeah. <coughs> or a bit of this ruffle, which is really big. Yes. Or I can have a bit of um, bit of ruffle up here. Yeah. And a bit of lace down there. I like that more. You like that more, do you? Yeah. Or that one? No, the other one. Or that one? No, not that one. No. No. So you like that more, do you? Yeah. Shorter no, or longer? Longer. You like that more? Yeah. And that down there? Mm-hmm. No, a bit shorter, I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually fold that around the back. Oh, no, I won't. Okay. I don't know about that. Without that, maybe something else. What is this? No. Oh, no, no, none of that would go on it. Do you have anything else that I you could, could put there? No. No. I would, well, if you don't like it, I won't put anything there. Yeah, I, I just prefer it like that. You like it like that, not with that? No. Well, that's nice. I just didn't like having something there. You didn't like something there. Or do you like that down there? No. Mm. Up there. Okay, well, I'll stitch that on there then. Okay. Thank you, Lily. No Will I use that thread? Yes, why not? So I'll, I'll go with Lily's advice. Um, I think I'll grab two threads. We'll pin it in place so I don't put it on crooked. You now you could have, of course machine stitch in place if you don't want to hand stitch. And I'm just going to do a couple of rows, backwards and forwards. Very, very simple. Mm, maybe, just having a look here, I see I had some blue here, that might have been better. Maybe I could, let's just grab this for a second. I might change my mind, guys. I'll just show you quickly. That's very crooked, isn't it? Let's see what that, no, the colors aren't right, I don't think. No, okay, I'll just keep on going with this one. Sorry. You wouldn't want to see me start all over again anyway. And then I'm going to just pop over to the other side of the machine stitching there and do another row back.
that's not bad. Okay, so what's next? It's cute, I like that. Okay, so um, I said I was going to leave that. What I need to do is sort out this mess up here. So I'm just going to make it a little bit straighter, if at all possible. Not that it was really necessary. And what I'm going to do here is I've done this before, is I'm going to take and tear it. Hopefully it doesn't all fall apart in my hands, as I mentioned before. Pull all those strings off because they'll annoy me. And I'm going to... Oh, that's the reverse side. That's going to go... So I'm going to choose this side that has the flower. So it's a bit like... I've, you've seen me do this before. That's going to go... So we've got to do this first, this bit here. Grab a pin and stick that there. Uh, what else can we put? So we could even put some of this painted. I see that would be nice across there. Can I get a, a broader piece of that? Maybe this way. I'll just cut that. Not that I'm probably going to do anything with it. I was just mucking around, but you never know. I might. And I'm going to cut, rip, sorry, this, like so. And then I'm going to take a piece like that. Oh, I like this. And that's going to go there. How cool is that with the painted fabric? So, what well, I think it's cool. Okay. That will go on another part and then I need something else. Now here you've got to just be careful that it's all there so I'll put another pin in. Super cute, super fun, I highly recommend it. Now I did bring in my little basket of bits and pieces that can be used. Uh, let's see what I've got. This is from when I was doing my strip. And I am going to choose possibly that. No, I think I'd like something. Now, this is quite thick, this fabric. But I think I would like something like this. Um, yeah, I don't think I want red. No, I'm going to do it all blue. So I'm just going to take, I won't be able to rip this one because it's, um, oh, but I could use that edge on the outside because it's quite thick. I'll just cut it a bit longer than what I need. Okay, so that's going to go there and I'm very happy with this. Now, obviously, the fastest way would be to um, use your sewing machine. But I have decided I don't know why. I'm doing it all by hand. Yeah, that's going to be good. And uh, let me see if that makes No. Okay, give up, Rachel. Okay, that's good. So let's stitch that. I think I'll use, will I use that thread or will I use the thread, which is the other one I used? Is it this one? Is that one? Or will I use that thread across there? That thread? Subtle, subtle. Let's go subtle. So I need two. I'm going to do two and I've lost my needle. Oh, there it is in front of me. And then afterwards, um, you could stitch on a tie if you wanted to, like a wraparound, but I, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Okay. 
So what I'll do is I'll do my first bit here. It's only one layer. This bit here is not thick at all. This is a very old, flimsy fabric. So I'll show you the first row and then I will pause the video because otherwise it'll be too long. And um, and then we'll I'll show you. And I'll prepare the, for the rest of it. To, to close off the sides. So I'm starting at the top here because I want to capture it all down, you know, make sure it's all down. And I'll probably do three rows across, I think, this. Now this is a bit thicker, so I am just stabbing it. I'm going to go back. I've got a little bit of thread left. I'll finish off my thread and then I'll pause the video and finish it off. So I'll do a row here and then I'll go a row across there. Hopefully I'll catch the back. It's not the end of the world if I don't catch it all. I've caught it now, but my bottom row, I don't know how evenly I folded it over, but it's not a, it doesn't have to be that precise. I'll just end that off and I'll just show you the reverse side as well. So this is the reverse side. It's fairly even, so I will be catching it as I do my three rows as well. So I'll put you on pause or I'll be joining them together and then I will be back. Okay, so I finished um, the pouches. So I just wanted to show you those at the end of this video. We've got this one here where I stitched on the ruffle. It's all hand stitched and this piece stitched around the bunny, put my sort of binding down the rough edge. That edge was already um, hemmed, so I didn't um, do anything on that and then stitched across there. And there you have a lovely pouch, super simple. And then I did this one here. I stitched around the bunny. Um, I did stitch its eye because I accidentally colored that in. Um, I added these two pieces, a um, bit of lace and a bit of, old Sanderson fabric. I also did a row of stitching down here. I thought that was nice. And then this one had two raw edges. So I did um, the binding on both edges and the binding inside. And that one's a slightly deeper pocket. So there you go. And you could do something on the back if you wanted to. Um, I didn't, um, but you could. So um, I hope you enjoyed that project. Super easy. And I will see you again soon in the next video. Bye.